Welcome, Lizette Orton, to um, Teesside Rising. Thank you for doing this. And um, would you like to tell our wonderful audience who will be watching this uh, what your art form is, your creative art form? Uh, I just say do stuff with words. Yes, um, do. <laughs> just writing words in all their forms. Uh, activism, novels, poetry, spoken word, theatre, film. If it's got a word in it, I'll do it. Oh, that's fantastic. I love that. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> when and how did you first get involved with the arts? Uh, primary school, got to play yeah. the scarecrow in The Wizard of Oz, <gasps> had an allergic reaction to the straw, <laughs> love, love the audience. <laughs> oh, that's, <laughs> that's like perfect. Perfect. Do you know I played? No, no, it wasn't the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, it was. I played the um, the Good Witch, Witch of the North or Witch of the South, whichever. Did you get a nice dress? Uh, I can't really remember it. I just remember that I had um, one line, and uh, the lad, the the lad who was playing some other part before me, um, jumped in before my line, and I missed me hook. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> traumatic. <laughs> oh, I wish we were in a room together. I know, I'm meant to. Oh, I'm going to get a bit giddy. This is supposed to be serious, this. Right, okay. <laughs> it's back on. So what, <laughs> so what inspired you to first get involved with the arts, as you are now? I am now. Uh, okay, so when I was little, it was because you had to do a thing at school and I was shit at sports, so I picked the arts and then I realised I liked it. Um, but now, um, so there's like a before and after for me. Before yeah. I'd been, I uh, went to uni, I trained in drama and real sense of like social activism. I was off to travel the world and go and teach English as, as a foreign language and a broke properly broke so um became disabled person and the only thing that I could still do every now and again was scribble so writing became the preferred art form and it's just grown from there yeah yeah and hasn't it <laughs> yeah <laughs> so what inspired you to get involved uh let's talk about part two of my life because that's so much more exciting um it was Tease Women Poets um, coming along to a session with them and having been terrified of coming back out in this new persona as disabled person and they were warm and funny and kind and just embraced anybody so that was mint and yeah. also I did um, a greater tease practitioner training program some of those words not necessarily in that order yes and I know what you mean yeah I did that at ARC in Stockton and so that was an amazing hub to find. And I met Vicky Refford Sinnott there, um, an amazing Northeast disabled writer, activist. So yeah, all that stuff combined, bizarrely all at the same time to, to help. Yeah, all came together at the right time. Yeah, proper tease posse of wonderfulness. I love that, I love that. I remember all that, I remember you doing that actually, that course. <laughs> I can't remember what it's called either, but yeah. No, they had lots um, of lessons in a funny order. Yeah, 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 it was. Who are your major influences and inspirations? Uh, Book-wise? Any-wise that help you um, be a crea the creative genius that you are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Come on, uh, let's, let's see how it is. <laughs> I'll hit you with two. David Armand, Children's Order, North East. First time I saw North East voice written on the page. Yeah. And realised that, like, you could do that, which was yeah. mint. Um, so that was massive. And um, as we've mentioned so far, our mutual love for uh, Frida Kahlo. Oh, just, I don't know. Just her art, her being, her moustache, her everything. Yeah. Just, um, yeah. If I'm stuck, I just do, like, what would Frida say? And then rock it. Yeah, she was an amazing woman. I mean, it, imagine if she was around today, it would just be... You'd be kicking some ass, yeah. wouldn't you? Oh, God, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was. Just everything about her. Everything. Mm. Yeah. That's, that's... Oh, Lizette, I've missed you so much. 
Are you self-taught or have you had a formal education uh, in the so creative arts? Uh, went to uni and did, um, went to Bretton Hall, which was basically university in the 70s, but in the <laughs> So it was like part of Leeds Uni and it was set in a sculpture park and it was a dry village. So there was lots of illegal drug taking activities going on, just all really? sorts of dry. It was, it was phenomenal. It was just like um, a gathering of people and stuff. And I don't really remember the lessons being particularly structured, but <laughs> it's where I did work in prisons and probation hostels and schools and realized, realized I didn't want to be like a fluffy actor. I wanted to do that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the that sounds amazing. School, I just made that up. <laughs> <laughs> so um, do you, I know, I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Do you work alone or as part of a collaboration? And, and which kind of do you prefer, even though they're very different? I do both, do both, so, and I love both. I love um, hiding in a space and just writing and writing and reading and writing and like days go by and I love that. But obviously what I'm really missing now is the collaboration side of it. So on a, a big scale in with plays, with actors together, with Tease Women Poets, when we do our work together, when we work and bounce off each other. Um, lots of festivals that I've worked for and arts venues and yeah, do loads of work with other artists, especially in different disciplines, because that makes it really exciting. And yeah. Oh, I know it's awful, isn't it? It's like we've lost, it's like we're grieving, isn't it? Yeah. That's, yeah, it's awful. It's horrible, actually. I, don't, I can't think about it. Oh! Especially, oh, oh we managed, to, we managed, to, we managed to do three little um, events at the cafe before all this. Just, just I before. Thought oh, I you, of you. Look, I've just made a shrine. Oh. And that's photos of all live stuff. You hold on, I'm going to find that you're on it. Hold oh. On. There, there, can you see uh, which one? No, that's Dean. I can't work out which way to go. There. Oh yeah, I don't know what I'm doing on there. I look like um, look at Liz, look at look at <laughs> look at <laughs> she's done. It looks like she's um, you know that uh thing you do when, oh, when you like fancy yeah. something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it was missing. Oh, don't tell her I said that. It does though, doesn't it? Oh, my God, that bit. So yeah, I put sparkly lights on photos of people and it made me feel a little bit better. Oh, that's that's lovely. So this is your writing space here. This is where you go to write and create. Yeah. And yeah. That's lovely, yeah. that. That's really nice. What a lovely space. Um, where can we find your work, Lizette? Uh, Published online. On my website, it's got links to everything. Uh, What's your website? It's my name, which is how I remember it. <laughs> www.lizetteorton.co.uk and you'll find links to books and films and work and shiz. Fantastic. Are you working on anything at the minute? Is um, it all secret or is it secret? <laughs> Some of it's secret, so we can't talk about that. Uh, let's think what am I doing at the moment. You, are you, you writing another novel at the moment? Are you working on another novel? It's beginning book two. So it's terrifying because I've spent a year editing and I've forgotten how to write. But do you want to see my wall? Hold on. Yeah. So that. this is how you do your, is this your writing process? You kind of get all your stuff on you. Oh, that, do you know that's so organised? That's my wall. Well, I pretend it is, but I, I think I do that as a major form of procrastination because then I can stick pretty things on the wall and go to loads of work. <laughs> and I can go, yeah, but how many words have you actually written? Was that zero? You shit. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> trying to research and remember how to write a book so doing that at the moment um doing some lovely little um projects with arc doing workshops with them what's on the list uh yeah, oh that's nice things. that's good yeah I'm, I'm enjoying that um but mainly at the moment going back to kind of creating and writing having had a busy time doing lots of work for other people now it's a bit of time to do some stuff for me yeah yeah else. oh that's good that's good so nearly finished why are the creative arts important to you personally and more universal like everyone else? Because life's about story and life without 
story and telling story to make sense of our world in whatever way we do that, be that in paint or art or, or music or literature, we need to do that. And it's vitally important that it's not really sorry, but just white male middle yes. class people yes. who are in power telling those stories so the more women and the more disabled people and the more black people and asian people and every person who isn't one of those people's stories in whatever way they do art gets out there then more people <sighs> convinced they can do it too that is that yeah absolutely and we're seeing all that play out right now aren't we with all this politics and even the way this is being handled yeah. just flipping white bloody men absolutely and having absolutely no understanding yeah. of what it's like to be in anyone's shoes but but i don't have understanding of what it's like to be in other people's shoes but i can empathize and yes. i can ask questions and i can research and i can listen and then i can trust that that's true and i can put that into practice it's a bit easy isn't it yeah oh, Lizette for Prime Minister, man. <laughs> oh, my God, yes. You'll sort the world out. Oh, oh God. I'm together this is... put in a cupboard with a coat on. <laughs> oh, this is just making me realise how much I want to see you. Oh, it's oh, awful. Until soon. As soon as we're allowed to travel again, as soon as we're allowed to do open air, we'll go for beach walks together and it'll be yes. lush. Oh, yeah. Just hug. Um, do you know what I'm missing hugging the most because yeah. I'm a hugger yeah, I hadn't realized like and I think do you know what I'm really scared of that I'll always be scared of hugs I don't, oh. I, don't I don't think you will I don't think you will I hope so I think I, I think once it's all I think once it's kind of back to you know because it will but we've yeah, got to keep you have to keep that in your head it will get back to that yeah. I think once you've done it a couple of times yeah you'll 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 just do it because I'll that's be who. Julie, man, Julie, man, I'm, in, I'm into hugs. Can we do one that lasts seven hours, please? <laughs> because that's who we are, isn't it? Yeah. That's who we are. So yeah. I think we'll just all be just, just yeah. one mass hug. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And finally, my love, how has lockdown been? Creatively, emotionally, physically, mentally? I had a lovely message from a friend the other day and she was saying that it's the duality of this situation, which is really hard. Like, um, like at the beginning, I was terrified because work just went, hello, goodbye. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I, I, I was going on a national tour and oh, look, no, I'm... <laughs> um, and selfishly, I was incredibly fortunate that organisations supported me and commissions came along. So that was good. And I, I'm, I have a roof. And I have a gorgeous husband and a dog and I am safe and he keeps me safe and well. And so, and my family is safe and well. So I am beyond fortunate and so very lucky. But then there's that duality of people dying and yeah. people being, people starving and people yeah. not having income and how are other countries going to get hold of the vaccine? Yeah. And politicians just being fuckheads yeah. and DNR things being placed on disabled people yes. and, just, and so it's that thing of well I'm okay and then boom. yeah yeah and that, that's where I just have to go and like rock in a chair for half an hour <laughs> <laughs> oh don't we all yes yes so it's, I, I, I completely understand what you mean so it's that being grateful but then that overwhelming rage against what they're what they're yeah, yeah. And that's the ability to do anything because they blatantly know this stuff and it's in front of them and they still go, oh yeah, that's fine. Yeah, like, exactly. Like, and sometimes it's like, what do you do with the rage? So um, yeah, I write stuff and yeah. I don't know whether that'll ever help anyone, but it kind of helps me. So I'll just keep yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. well, that's what that's why we're creative, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. To, let, to get it all out. <laughs> oh, my love, my love. So, well, hopefully... This lockdown will, well, well, it will be out of it soon, I hope. Yeah. Oh, God knows. Who knows? Who the hell knows anything anymore? At the moment, I am just literally, I'm doing loads more meditation than I usually do. And I'm just having to have a hell of a lot of be here now. Because I don't want to wish these days away. Yes. We're wishing years of our life away. And that's I know. Crazy. I know. To be here and be okay with being. Yeah, I agree. 
Yeah. And just looking forward just kind of hurts. And then you make plans and they break. So just, it is. Yeah. I, I told yeah, you're right. You're right. Absolutely. Oh my God. I, just, I, I needed this today. You've helped me so much. <laughs> oh, Lizette, it's been so lovely to see you. And you. And um, we will meet again. We will. This Somebody. year. There needs to be like the Vera Lynn soundtrack coming oh, out. Oh, the doors and we all just come together and like one massive, oh. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be wonderful though. Yeah. Imagine how wonderful it's all going to be, yeah? yeah? It's going to be lush. Tease women poets back together. Yeah. Poets, yeah, yeah. Everyone. Oh, and then Shanti. Just oh, don't. Oh, oh, beautiful you. It's um, it's pretty hard because um, we don't know from one week to the next what the hell's going on because we find out the changes on flipping Twitter and stuff. It's like they don't even tell you. It should be that they have your email, that you've ticked the boxes of who yes. you are and what you do. So, it, so you get this central thing, like I'm finding out stuff that I could have applied for or done like months later after it's closed. I'm yeah, like, it's a nightmare. Well, they do that on purpose, don't they? So it's, an, it's a nightmare. And so we're still opening <clears throat> very limited takeaways, but people just aren't coming because they're scared. Understand. And you can't blame them. What they need to do is just, if they did the proper, <laughs> absolute, definite lockdown... And then yes, properly, absolutely. Properly Either or, but this is yeah, just crazy. This piddly bit in the middle where you get fuck all and can do fuck all is just, it's not helping anyone. Oh, but it's just awful. We go in and it's like, it's not meant to be an empty space, you know what I mean? And we go in and people aren't allowed. It's just tragic, yeah. honestly. Yeah, I'm just and it's, that's the thing, it's, it's the feel and the smell and the hubbub in there that I love. And yeah, it makes you realise that place is gorgeous but when you take the faces out of yeah, it yeah absolutely it's not meant to be empty but i'm damned if the tories are going to stop us they're not going to they so are we're not. just gonna we're just putting our heads down and planning yeah. for the future and yeah. you know and, and we will move heaven and earth as a community to make sure that happens <clears throat> and we put a call out and we do whatever needs to be done yeah and we'll be back with a massive massive packed in do you know do you remember the, <clears throat> do you remember diverse 10 that you, when you came and you did that little thingy, do you know it was the it was two years ago almost. No, born in January, um, mm -hmm. on the tenth of January. It's two years since that night. Ah, oh, and me and when I, me and Catherine sat in the cafe, just me and her the other day. Yeah. And I was like, e, this time two years ago, this place was absolutely jam packed. <laughs> so well, isn't that people in the corridor? I know, but do you remember how wonderful that was? How amazing that night was? And you know, it's it's the best place and the safest place for me not knowing anyone. That's yeah. the thing. Like, like I can walk in going, don't have a clue whether anyone's going to be here, I know, but someone will say hello and say, sit here. Yeah. Or, you know, it's just that feel of... Like, I know, I know. So, yeah, I know, I know. So we're just holding on to that, that that happened and it will happen again. You know, everyone's squished like that and... And yeah. everyone's so determined for it to happen. Again. It will. Yeah. It will. Yeah. Just there's gonna, like yeah. There's going to be some amazing creative stuff coming out of this as well because yeah. Pete, that's what this is what we do, isn't it? When exactly. chips are down. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you, my love. I'll let you go. All right, lovely. Um, I love your oodles. And as soon as um, traveling restrictions are over, we're beach walking together. Oh yes, let's 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 do it. That. that will be wonderful absolutely wonderful okay. well take care I will. and I you look fantastic and um you. and i, I bet can't... you smell amazing oh well and do you know I <laughs> that makes me so makes me so happy when because i i just well i won't say what i think of myself but when you say that i just think oh that's so lovely but it's true. it's true my brain doesn't do lies <laughs> so you just get it as it is <laughs> okay my love right i'll see you soon okay right, take you. loads another care love you love you love you, love you. Bye. oh you've made my day <laughs>